Hey, so I thought I would do a little day in the life tutorial about what SBS life looks like. So I will walk you through this step by step. Step by it, you may grow up into salvation. I might just continue on with that. I like that. <laughs> so step one was to read the entire book out loud in one sitting which we have done as a group, and now we kind of break off and individually we go to step two and do color coding of the text. So here we're basically looking for uh, people and places and keywords and time and contrast, comparisons, a bunch of different things to help us to better dissect the text, understand what it's saying, and just get familiar with it. So then we can build observations in future steps. So this is read number two and it depends on the size of the book, how long it'll take us, um, but I'm going to get to color coding. So on lecture days, we cycle into class, which is about a 15 minute ride through Cambridge. And we come to St. Andrew's Cathedral to have our class time. And we open our eyes to see and engage with this book. We wanted to look at content within the pages of this book. Yes, because we know it's the letter that heals, but the spirit gives life. So now that we have done our color coding, the next step is to do paragraph titles. So in the original text, there were no verse references or chapter references, not even punctuation. So we get to go in and decide what the chapter titles are for ourselves. And we have to pick out four words in each paragraph that are consecutive that basically give a little summary statement of what's going on in the text. So we read through the whole text again, and we identify all the paragraph titles, put them into a program that makes our life a lot easier so we don't have to do it by hand, and that'll help us for the next step of structure. So after we have all of our paragraph titles, we read through the text again and come up with our structure. So the paragraph titles are on the left here. We put those all in, and then we can divide it into segments sections and divisions that help us to kind of break down the text to see more of what the structure really looks like. So I have my different section titles and this is kind of like a table of contents of the book if you will. Uh, we come up with an alternative book title and a key verse. So I go ahead and create my verticals and then they give me a cool little chart that looks something like this. So the next step after the structure is built and we have our horizontal chart is to do our synthetic, which is a main idea, reason written, and key verse. Our main idea is like the timeless truth of the book, the overall takeaway. And then we have the reason written, which includes that main idea, who it was written to and why basically. And then we have our key verse that incorporates both of those and that helps us for the next section. So the next step in this process is something called a horizontal check. Basically, we stop where we're at in the process and we reach out to our grader and we give them our synthetic method or the main idea, all that. And then we give them the horizontal or the structure and they give us a little feedback, making sure that we're on the right track. We're not way off base on what the main point of the book is or how it's being divided up. And then once we get the go ahead, we can move forward on to our next step. So during this time, we typically attend lectures who teach us about each book. It can be anywhere from three hours to a nine hour teaching, depending on the size of the book. They give us historical background, um, content from scholars, ancient artifacts, help us to understand the book in more depth. And then we take that information and do what's called a BRI or basic required information. So it takes about three hours <laughs> to scratch the surface um, to understand more of the historical context so we know what's going on in the book from the original reader's perspective, why it was originally written, and how it applied to them so we can better interpret the text. So I will show you a little bit of that. During this time, we use the scripture, Bible dictionaries, and other reputable sources along with our ne lecture notes. We have to time everything that we do and we walk through this template to help us organize our thoughts. We answer questions like who wrote the book, when was it written, to who, and from where. 
using internal evidence from the scripture itself and then the external evidence. We recognize the arguments that are out there for authorship and dating and come to our own conclusion about those answers so we can better interpret the text from that lens. We also look at the history. So who was the original audience or readers? Who makes up that audience? And what's the historical context that's going on? Their original mindset and culture? What was the former religion? And why was the letter written? So I'm about halfway through and I'm going to get back to it. All right, here's my completed BRI. So now I have a bunch of citations and resources that I can go back to while I'm doing the next step uh, to better interpret the text historically. Ta-da! All right, so the next part of this journey is to do charting. And here we observe through the text. Um, we read the text one more time all the way through. We make observations based on our color coding, things we pull out of the text to then interpret through the historical context lens of our lectures uh, to basically understand what was the text saying to that person or audience in that time period. Then we come out with a timeless truth that is applicable to any person anywhere in the world at any time and apply that to the world through a sphere application, um, whether that be education or government or church or family. Um, we can also do a mindset application where we've had a change in belief, or we do an action application where we actually apply it to our life um, through maybe journaling or praying or making some kind of a change. So I'll show you a little bit of that. So thankfully this book is a little bit shorter, um, but you can see here I have an observation. Then I have an interpretation about what that observation means through historical context, come out with a timeless truth, and then a sphere application for this one. Um, sometimes we have difficult passages that we have to answer, things that may be interpreted in multiple different ways. Um, so we have to kind of come to a conclusion on those. And then we do a chart summary about what we think was going on in this whole chart. What was the author trying to say or God trying to communicate? Um, so that is charting. This was a pretty short one, which is nice. Normally I have a lot more of these builds um, throughout the text, but that gives you a little bit of a snippet. So the second to last part of the process is we do a final application. So this is kind of a final takeaway of the book um, based on a timeless truth and something that was actually in scripture. And I will show you that. So here is my final application for this book. Um, my takeaway was that women are called to be beauty at rest. And then we answer some questions about how this has impacted our mindset, our worldview, our uh, view of God, how it's personally impacted us. And then we can do um, a interpretation of how am I going to change my life based on this? How is this going to be applied in my life? Or how this might affect and change society? And we pray about it, do it, and that is our final application. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, we have finally gotten to the end of the process, step 12. So this is where we go and celebrate because we just did a lot of hard work. So I'm going to go do that. Um, we've read through the book about five times and I think it took me about 10 hours or so. So it's been quite the process, a lot of great takeaways. Uh, usually it takes me anywhere from a day. Sometimes it takes us a week to go through a book that many times. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed walking through this experience with me. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, uh, I'll look forward to sharing more about my journey when I get back. So thanks.